So what is deflation? Is it a bad thing or is it a good thing? Well, deflation is when most of the prices of the things that you buy decrease over time. Now I'm not talking about like something overnight that happens because the oil industry um, throws a wobbler, the price of oil goes down and so the price of fuel goes down temporarily. I'm talking about month upon month, year upon year drops in prices. Um, the banks and the politicians spend enormous amounts of money trying to persuade you that deflation is a very bad thing. It's evil. Yeah? Deflation is the vampire of economic theories. It's the bogeyman. He hides underneath your mattress, which doubtless is stuff full of euros or dollars and leaps out to scare everyone. Well, yes and no. Deflation is very, very bad for politicians and for bankers and for some classes of investors. For the ordinary man on the street, it's somewhere between neutral and actually quite good news. Now, let's think of deflation in terms of what happens if you have a loan. Okay, let's say you've got a big loan. Let's say you've got a loan of 100,000. Okay, and your repayments are set at maybe 600 every month. Now, when deflation happens, the value of your property or your asset or whatever you've bought with a hundred thousand will go down but you still owe the bank a hundred thousand or whoever you borrowed the money from and you still have to make your 600 monthly repayment but that 600 is worth a lot more maybe that 600 um, would have bought you 500 loaves of bread when you started your loan after some deflation maybe that only buys you 200 loaves of bread sorry other way around maybe that buys you 2000 loaves of bread um, so with deflation sometimes you get wage contraction and we're not used to this in the west I mean, I've had it happen once where an employer turned around and asked all the workers in the factory to take a 5% pay cut for six months. That worked. Um, because there were very good labour relations between the employer and the people working in the factory. Now, how would you like it? And the logic is, if the price of everything is going down, then really your wages can go down because you can buy more with what you get. And the company you work for becomes more competitive. Now, the other effect it has is on exports. Um, now, if you export, um, Britain doesn't export an awful lot. Nowadays, neither does the States, really, not compared to its GDP. So, if you do export a lot, then you will find that your export markets become very difficult because your prices are too high. That's the negative side, but if you're a normal person on the street, then everything gets cheaper. Um, it's good news. If you buy imported goods or services, then those become very cheap and you can afford to buy more. And one of the arguments often used by the bankers is that, oh, if there's deflation, people will buy less. Well, no, I'm sorry, they won't. 
I mean, <laughs> if you have, say, the price of paperback books currently is around about five ninety nine, and it goes down to three forty, are you going to buy more of them or less of them? More of them, obviously. So this argument by um, politicians and economists doesn't really stack up. Neither do most of the other ones that they present, because at the end of the day, yeah, sure, your exports go down, but you don't need so much money in the country, so you're not so worried, in theory, about exports. Then there comes the problem, and this is the real, real reason why governments and banks don't want deflation. If you look at the amount of money that banks owe to other banks and to governments, it's huge. If you look at the amount of money that governments owe, it's massive. So, in a deflationary economy, what tends to happen is wages tend to go down a bit, or at least stay the same. So, effectively, ta taxes contract. So there's not so much money available for the government to service this huge, in the case of the US, around about $17 trillion debt. So, suddenly, it becomes obvious that there is a problem with all this money printing. And the problem is that if deflation occurs, you've got less money to service your debt. So either you have to pull back from defence spending and massively pull back. You have to pull back from lots of other public schemes, reduce the size of government, which we all know that Obama wouldn't like. Um, or default on your debt. And as soon as you default on your debt, then you're in real, real trouble with every other government in the world. So politicians understandably don't want to do this. They don't want inflation. They want, don't want deflation. They want inflation. They want products to get more expensive so that the value of the money that they owe drops. You think about that for a minute. If there is inflation, then the value of the money that the government owes actually drops and it's easier for them to make the repayments because wages have gone up, taxation goes up. However, if it's deflation, the value of the money that the government owes goes up. So they have to pay back effectively more. So despite keeping interest rates low, at maybe near 0%, they still owe a huge amount more than they used to. And this is the real reason why governments and large institutions in general who have very high debts really hate deflation. It's not a bad thing. It's just a thing. At the end of the day, the Swiss back when, in the 1990s, when they still had a gold-backed Swiss franc, they lived with deflation. It was happening all the time. And they did very well on it. If you look back at the Swiss economy during this period, they did really well. But the thing is, the politicians in this sort of a period, they really have to work for a living. They can't spend, spend, spend. They can't print money hand over fist. They actually have to be careful and they can make mistakes. Now politicians don't like this. So they will do everything possible to paint inflation as some big monster, big scary thing that lumbers up to you and takes away all your money. Well, that's not true. It's not true at all. In fact, it's a complete lie. Deflation makes things very difficult for countries. It makes things much easier for individuals. But then, 
When have Western politicians cared about individuals? So I hope you found this useful and informative and if you have please like, please subscribe and please share. Thank you very much.